One guy wrote me a letter and said, Dr. Hovind, your video series was bought for our local high school, Waverly High, in Ohio. When I went to check out video number five, I found someone had hidden the box of seminars and date debates unopened and underneath a desk by a back wall. I was told by the librarian that she was told not to put them out for the students to find. My 18-year-old daughter witnessed this. We were very upset, but I was told it was proof that the enemy was trying to void and hide the truth. My daughter has since graduated and don't know if those tapes are available to students or not. So if you do don't donate something, be sure to check and make sure it is, you know, kept on the shelf. I went to a bit, one big university one time and I spent probably an hour going through their computer search system looking for how many books they had on evolution. It was like 18 or 1900 books about evolution. And then I searched for, to see how many books they had about creation. This is a big university library. Not one book. I searched every author that I know, and I know most of them. I went to the librarian and I said, uh, I noticed you got 1,800 books on evolution, but you don't have any books on creation. Why is that? She said, there is too a good book in here on, evolu on creation. She said, I put it in here myself. It's from my church, the Watchtower Society. <laughs> oh, brother, we got one Jehovah's Witness book in here. <laughs> and 1,800 teaching evolution. And then they brag about being a liberal university and giving the kids a liberal education. You're lying. A liberal education is when you look at all sides. Let's just discuss all sides and then decide where the truth lies. They don't want to compare evolution with creation because evolution looks stupid next to the truth. There are some practical things we can do, folks, to fix this. Number one, you can demand that the schools cut out the pages with false information. You don't have to get creation in the schools and you don't have to get evolution out. Just simply get the lies out. You can tell them you want them to glue the pages together, or you can at least put a warning sticker in the front cover saying, kids, the information on page 97 is not correct. Or, you know, list the pages. I volunteered many times, and I'll do it again. I will, if you will, send me your textbook. I will check the pages that need to be torn out. I'll make a tape recording while I'm traveling someplace, and I'll hand you the tape, and it'll say, you know, the information on page 84 is wrong. Tear that page out, and, you know, page 217 is wrong. And I'll list the pages. And if you, got, if you tore the pages out of the book, it won't cost the school one penny. I'll show you. It's so simple. Because the first objection they're going to say is, oh, this would cost the schools a lot of money. It won't cost them a penny. How many of you would volunteer to tear the pages out of the books and bring your own scissors? Let me see. There you go. So when you go to your school board, hand them a list of 500 names and say, these people are willing. To, when would you like it done? won't cost a thing. Look, the book is not sacred. It's made out of paper, you know. If you, if you bought it, the county bought it. It belongs to the school. If you want to tear a page out, that's perfectly fine. I was in a debate with a professor at university. I was just speaking at UWF here oh, a year or so ago, and I mentioned tear the page out of the book, and this one professor said, I don't think we should deface textbooks. I said, well, sir, if you were teaching math and you came across the book that said, you know, 2 plus 2 is 5, what would you do? He said, I would tell the students to mark out the wrong answer and write in the right answer. I said, oh, you would deface a textbook? I said, now, sir, if you were teaching biology and you found a book that said the embryo has gills and you know that's proven wrong in 1874, what are you going to do? He said, well, nothing. I said, you wouldn't correct it? He said, no. I said, well, then you, sir, are a hypocrite. And you got no business using tax dollars to lie to these kids. You ought to get a different job changing tires or picking peaches and work for a living for a change. Guys like that burn me up, brother. <laughs> like a leech, you know, sucking on somebody else's blood that they built, you know. Number four, you can give the kids my little brainwashed book. There are different people around the country that buy these by the thousand and give them out to people in their schools. One guy from Santa Rosa County bought 3,000 of these books several years ago, gave them to all the kids in the county. They're going to have a hard time teaching evolution for a while over there. Buy some books or t go to your school board and say, would you please vote to purchase this book to go along with our biology book so the kids can see the lies in their books? If the school board buys them, great. If you get them, you know, more than 10, you get them for a dollar a piece. If the school board says, no, we don't want those books in school, then you run a full page ad in your paper, stop by the following address and pick up the book the school board banned. Now the kids will get it and read it. Mm-hmm, yeah. Florida has a law. They've changed the number now. It used to be uh, 233. 0.09e, I believe, but they changed it so people couldn't find it, I guess. It's now statute, Florida Statute 1006.35, Accuracy of Instructional Materials. Do you know, Florida, state of Florida legislature, can vote to recall books if they're, if they're not accurate. 
They can, they can write letters to the publishers and demand that they change the books. The laws on the books, folks, the, there's the, the textbooks are supposed to be accurate, but they're not. They contain 50-some lies in every textbook I've seen. Get the pages out. Texas has a law requiring textbooks to be accurate. Wisconsin has a law requiring textbooks to be accurate. Alabama has a law that says textbooks shall be adequate and current. Well, if they're still teaching the baby has gill slits, they're not current. They're 128 years behind the times. Alabama had, used to have a sticker. They modified it now and watered it down some. But the sticker used to say, this textbook discusses evolution, a controversial theory. And students need to be, learn there's a difference between microevolution, which is a fact, and macroevolution, which is not a fact. Go Bama. California has a requirement. Textbooks shall be factually accurate. Many states have this requirement, but they're just simply not enforcing it. Did you know the publishers will publish a special book just for our state? If the committee got together and said, look, well, Glencoe, we like your book. However, we want you to take out chapter 3 or take out the following pages. Do you know how much money is spent just in one school district on textbooks? A publisher would be foolish not to, you know, to turn down a contract for three quarters of a million dollars. They'll publish a special book. They do it all the time for different states. Get on that committee and do something about it. You can also, parents, be aware that your kids can be exempted from anything you don't want them taught. If you don't want your kids taught evolution, you sign a little paper that says, I do not want my student taught evolution. It's against my religious convictions. Have it notarized, sign, and give it to the school principal, the teacher, superintendent. And if they do teach your kid evolution, or if they say, oh, you've got to stay in class, then you can simply say, do you discriminate against people because of their religion? Ooh, that'll get their attention. Now, here are some pitfalls you've got to watch for in your school. I've seen this so many times. If the school's going to have a good program, some left-wing liberal will make sure that it's an opt-in program. In other words, you have to get parents' permission to go to the program. This happens all the time when I speak in schools. The kids have to come back with a note and saying, it's okay for me to go to Hovind's program. But if you're going to have some homosexual speak in your school, or some lesbian about the gay lifestyle, which is not gay at all, and it's not a lifestyle, it's a death style, if they're going to speak in your school, they'll make sure it's an opt-out program. You see the difference? In other words, you have to get a note in order to not come. But if it's a good program, you've got to get the note to go. And if it's a bad program, you've got to get a note to not go. They don't want a level playing field, folks. And if you have a superintendent or a school principal that tries that one, you ought to help him get a different job, too. Put the pressure on. He just needs to find a new job, maybe in a new county someplace. Some practical steps you can do. Number one, kids, don't confront your teachers publicly. Try to talk to them after class. Now listen carefully. If you are late to class frequently, if you're a troublemaker or a goof-off, if you never do your homework, if you don't pay attention in class, then please don't tell them you're a Christian. <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> First, be a good student. Now, if a question comes up on the test that says, you know, how old is the earth? And you know the answer they want. You can simply write on the test, the textbook says 4.6 billion. However, this is not correct. Now they know you learned the book, you did your homework, but you don't believe it, you didn't swallow it. That's perfectly fine. Number two, you can ask to be exempt. Now parents have to do this, the kids can't do it. I am not positive of that statement, but I believe it has to be done by the parents. You have to say, I want my child exempt from anything that's against our religion. Sign a note, give it to the school. Look, if 40 or 50 or 60 percent of the class was standing out in the hallway, wouldn't take the teacher long to figure out, you know, we ought to just skip that chapter. I had one guy call me up one day, he said, Brother Hovind, my second grade daughter has watched your videotapes probably 50 times. She can quote them. I don't know why kids watch the same tape over and over and over and over. He said, my second grade daughter's teacher just called me. And she said, sir, every time I talk about something in the class having to do with evolution, your, your daughter stops me and says, ah, oh, teacher, don't, that's not right. And the teacher said, I just want you to know, I'm going to skip evolution for the rest of the time this girl's in my class. <laughs> my first thought was, yay, this is great. And then I thought, why are we sending second graders off to war? Why aren't the parents fighting this battle? You know, the second grader ought to be able to go to class and read the book and believe what they're taught. Why are we allowing lies in the textbooks? Why are we, laying, why are we allowing liars in the te in the, to teach? <laughs> Don't lie to the kids. You can contact Joe Baker. He helps folks set up meetings on uh, 
getting kids in their school fired up on to do something in their local school. Joe had me come speak at his high school in Pennsylvania. They had an auditorium seats about a thousand people. They had 1,500 people come. The, fire, the pr principal was pulling his hair out, nervous as a cat, thinking the fire marshal's going to come you know, arrest me and throw me in jail. You know? They turned away like 300 people at the door said, no, you can't get in. And I spoke for over two hours at that public high school in Pennsylvania. Joe Baker arranged the whole thing, and he's been on fire for God ever since. Get a hold of him and say, what can I do in my school? If you're a public school student and you want to do something, Joe can help you get going. Um, some practical steps. You can give your teachers a video to watch at home. You can pray for them. Teaching is a tough job. My brother's in his 34th year. He said, Kent, it's not fun anymore. I can't wait to quit teaching. I'm, about, I'm sick of this. Teaching public school up in Illinois. My mom retired from teaching public school. You can invite your teachers to a creation seminar. You can have them call me with any questions. You can ask my secretary, Martha, sitting right 